Right, hello, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, we're going to be looking at how to make a circular texture um, from a straight square one. So, um, I've made this simple kind of noise thing. I don't quite know what it is, but it looks like something that could be cool. Um, and we want to turn it into a sort of a ring with the spikes pointing outwards. Well, I've collapsed it all down into one layer, and you have this option up here in Distort, this filter called Polar Coordinates. And what that will do take that input and turn it into a circle. So um, that's cool, that works. Um, it's not what I wanted. I wanted it to be inside pointing outwards. So if I just undo that, what I can do is rotate this round the other way up, like so. And then when I filter polar the coordinates, I get this kind of flower type shape. And that's really cool. That works really well. Quite quick and easy thing to do if you're working in Photoshop. It's not very interactive though. It's not very dynamic. Um, I want to resize this and scale it. I mean, I can, I can do this and, and what have you, but um, there is kind of a better way to do this if you want a bit more control, and that is um, to use a 3D modeling program. So I can save this out as a texture, um, and if I then go over to Maya, if I just click a quick plane, and then we can assign a material. So I'm just going to use a, a surface shader. So we're going to render this out, um, and when we render it, we don't want any lighting information on it. So Lamberts and Blins, they all take lighting. We're going to get specular highlights, don't want that. Just load in a file, load in that texture, um, and there we are. So what we can do with this, if we make it quite long and thin, so uh, what we're going to do then, we're going to bend it round into a circle. So we can do that with a bend deformer. So we go into the animation, bend, just the curvature one, and then we want to rotate this round, pipe situation. There we are. Um, we might want some more geometry. So we're going to be rendering this out at the moment. We're not using this geometry. We're just rendering, so it doesn't actually matter how many planes we have. Oh, that's the wrong one. Let's do this one. So this can be really smooth circle. Um, and what's nice about this, if we open up our UV editor, if I wanted to do that rotation, swap it so it was pointing inwards rather than outwards, you can just do that by editing my UVs. Go in here, UV toolkit. There it is, simple as that. And I can adjust these, right? I can interactively move them in and out. I don't have to worry too much about what I'm doing. Maybe I don't want to see the whole texture. Maybe I want to tile it. As long as I'm making sure that I'm a, a fixed number of UVs, you can create kind of nice tiling. All these extra tools you get um, here that you wouldn't get using uh, just the Photoshop filter. Um, and yeah, you can go crazy with that. Maybe you decide you want some natural 3D geometry to it. Um, whatever you want but now you've got a whole set of of 3d tools to affect your sort of 2d texture making um, and maybe this sphere or the mesh that you stick it on isn't just a disc maybe it's got twists um you could do that as well let's try that if i go back turn off my bend let's delete the history on that if i now create a twist form nonlinear twist Do full 360 maybe, and then I can add my deform bend. Select it. Then London new bend. There we are. Getting the right angle for these things. Hopefully you can see. We get some quite cool shapes out of this. Um, way more interaction and, and cool troll than we were getting with the other one. Um, where's our twist handle? Um, really cool shapes. Um, and we're just going to render this out to a texture. It doesn't matter how much geometry we've got. It's a weird sort of flowery thing going on there. Um, and this is just the geometry. We can also edit the UVs. I put my twists back down to zero. Maybe want like a spiral. Well, how would that work? Well, if I take this, rotate it like this, it goes off and comes in. You could make quite a cool spiral texture out of that input. And obviously, the input texture we use, and the geometry we use, and all the deformers, and all those things combined, we get a lot more control, and we can make some quite cool things. And nothing stopping us once we've rendered this out. If I just render a frame. It's just black on white. 
the detail there. We can just take this back into Photoshop and then tweak it there as well. So um, a nice little toolkit to have in your disposal. Um, don't always use it, but if you're doing something that you think might be easier to take a 2D texture and apply it and then into a 3D geometry, um, yeah, why not do that? There's nothing stopping you. Um, don't have to use this geometry. Don't have to use our input texture. We can just get whatever we want, however we want it. So cool. Hope that helps. Um, yeah, as always, any questions, comments, etc., let me know below, um, and I will see you all next time.